Before I start this, I just want to say I don't have all the answers. Every day I learn something new. You know, take this, learn from it, and just know that there's a lot more information out there that you should be looking into and really thinking about things before you really dive into something that's going to take a lot of time and commitment. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Marissa. I've been on the Roblox platform for about 12 years now. I've started many projects. The main three that I've shipped was my first game, Bittersweet, my Droplets as well, and then Mermaid Life. And I kind of have shipped a game called We're Going Shopping, which did not take off unfortunately, but it was fun to make it anyways. Every time I start a project, I think I have all this knowledge and like it's gonna be so successful. But then I start this project and I realized, wow, there's so many things that I did not realize would have made this project run a lot smoother and would have saved a lot of headaches for me. I wanted to make an updated five things you should know before becoming a Roblox developer, but in this case, I want to kind of go over six different things that I wish I had told myself, screaming at the top of my lungs, to do in order to make a project run more successfully. The reason why I kind of want to do this is because I honestly feel like that last video that I made was shallow in a way. <laughs> Not that I'm saying that those tips aren't helpful, but they're definitely very baseline and I feel like in this video I can explain things a lot more clearly and I think these tips are going to be super useful for you. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to like it and subscribe and also in the comments, I'd love to hear anything that you've learned as a game developer on Roblox or off of Roblox. Just let me know. So without further ado, let's get into the video. It's important for you to have a solid foundation before you start getting into the nitty gritty bells and whistles of your project. And what I'm saying by this is before you start going in and saying, okay, we want all of these different features, we want the pet system, we want the mini games, we want this long list of items in our game, we want to have a whole building system, like everything, all of that, they're all nice. But if you don't have a solid core loop of your game, a fun experience, then you're going to, down the line, have a very hard time figuring out what you need to improve about your core loop in order for it to be fun. I feel like I always kind of want to just jump into like the pretty stuff and the complicated stuff. Recently, I've been challenging myself to just sit in studio working with basic parts, basic systems, messing around with numbers until things feel good, feel rewarding. After I really feel like the experience is what I want it to be, then I can start thinking about the building system and the pet system and how the eyes are going to look on your droplet. It's just really important for you to make sure that you are taking the time to really refine the base of your game. Like under the hood, all of the metals and things like I'm trying to come up with a good metaphor for this but honestly just try to do your best and make that core experience good. So you have this core experience, it's so much fun and you're really excited and now you want to start kind of thinking about all of the different systems, all of the different game assets, all of the team that you want to hire unless if you're going indie. It's time to start thinking about the logistics of your game, what are the different systems that are going to be involved in the game, what kind of assets you want to include in the game like UI assets, 3D models, textures, variants of all of these things. You want to make sure that you have this list available now so you can kind of say, okay, this is how much content is going to need to be made for this new experience that you're working on. I have personally found myself getting way too excited to really plan everything out, so I just kind of like want to go into it and start making 3D models. And at the end of the day, you're going to realize that there is so much to do and you're going to forget things and it's going to make it harder down the line to get anything done because you realize that, wow, you don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. You don't have a cutoff deadline where you're going to release the game and this is the very specific content that you want for release and even the post-launch content that you want to put in your game depending on the kind of experience that you want to make. Don't get too excited. 
don't jump into things without planning because things go wrong when you don't plan. Personally, I like to use various project management tools to kind of help me while I'm planning the content. If you are a very small scale team, honestly, you could just go into Google Sheets and list out all of the different assets that you want to make and how long you think these assets are going to take you so that in the end you can kind of come up with your roadmap for your project. Even break this down into different milestones for your project, which I can make a whole video on after this about planning your project and if you would like to see that please let me know in the comments and I will make that video. If you're working with a larger scale team there are different project management softwares you can use. There's Notion, there's ClickUp. I personally use ClickUp for my company and we do pretty well with it. It definitely has its moments, it has its bugs. One of the newer project management softwares but they're improving every day so I'm a full supporter of them right now. Don't be shy. In the past, I have been so tightly passionate about I don't want to tell anybody about my experience. I don't want anyone to know everything that I'm going to be creating for this game because they're going to steal it. They're going to go on there and they're going to be like, hey, I'm going to just make this game. I'm going to release it. It's going to be so much more popular than Anne's game. And honestly, kind of how it is in the world like people are going to be inspired by your ideas and want to create them as well i mean there's like a million of copycat games on roblox and it's okay because everybody wants to make these things somebody sees a pet game they're like oh this is so cute i want to make a pet game they're gonna go make a pet game and there's really nothing you can do about it but what you have to realize is you have different skills than the next person you have a different set of tools that you can bring to the table in your experience they'll have their own flair on things and that's okay but if you hold on to the idea that you have to make your game private and not let anybody know what's going on you're gonna find yourself coming to the end of the project and nobody's gonna know that you've made a game and nobody's gonna have that hype or like passion for your game they're gonna be like oh what's this like this just popped up out of nowhere they don't have any context moving forward it's really important for you as a game developer to just share your work and get feedback from communities and with that you're going to possibly build a community you're going to receive lots of good feedback think about things that you probably wouldn't have thought about before because in life you can't do everything alone you need to get outside opinion because people are going to see things in a different way than you are going to see them just be sure that you're not shy go on the internet tweet about it make videos about it make tiktoks about it you know being an influencer in any medium that you are in it's good to share because then you're going to get your word out there get your game out there that brings me into my my next tip which is building a community for your project so you have a game idea you want to start hyping it up you want to get people to really love your game as much as you do so at this point you're going to start sharing footage of your game you're going to start asking for feedback on it maybe they can give you suggestions of content that you can put in your game open betas where if people are in your roblox group they can come in and play your game but if they're not in your group then they don't have access so it kind of creates this trust between you and your community that you're working with it allows them to come a lot more passionate about your game in the way that you are then it'll be your baby and it'll be their baby. Build your community. I want to let you know that you should be playing your own game. I have started so many projects and after that launch date, I'm like, I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to take a break. When I do that, I stop playing my game and I sit around scratching my head wondering why is nobody else wanting to play my game? Isn't it fun? Well, sometimes you realize that there is no gameplay in your game. Sometimes you build an experience and it's so beautiful. There's so much art. There's so much to like explore, but there's no actual element in there that's going to keep your players in your game. And I've done this a lot of times because going back to tip one, making sure your core game is good before you start adding in all the bells and whistles, that sometimes you just forgot to actually put any gameplay in there. Moving forward, I've had opportunities where I can kind of stream my game for people and people like ask questions about it like, hey, what do you do in this experience? And like, I'll play my game in front of a lot of people and I'll be like, hey, I don't even know what you can do in this experience. I just know that it's pretty and that's how it, how it is sometimes, you know? We're learning, we're growing. <sighs> So, in the future, what I want to do more is I want to play my experiences. Taking notes, playing it, iterating, don't just launch it and expect the players to tell you what it needs because that's not always going to happen. They're going to maybe even guide you in the wrong direction. You are ultimately the game designer and you should be playing your game and figuring out what you can do to make it a better experience. That brings me to the next part. A big mind-blowing thing. Get others to play your game too because 
you're gonna realize that you're playing your game a totally different way than other people are going to be playing your experience. I have made games and I'm like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Like, people are gonna get it, people are gonna play it. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, I go over here, I press this button, it's gonna be good. But in reality, it's not good because they're going to go on the opposite side of the map. They're going to completely ignore the actual line of path that you tried to guide them in and they're going to get lost and you're just going to have to deal with that. And it sucks because you're like, no, go over here. You're going to have issues. And recently, I have found this fun little way to create a storyline based off of a playtest that happens. I can say, okay, this player is doing this thing and ended up in this part of the game and this is how they felt about things, this is how they behaved in this area, and then you can start offering suggestions and solutions for these, and then you can go and iterate on it and have more playtests until these people are playing your game in a clear way. And also it's about diversity. Make sure you have a diverse group of people if you're able to. And many different people to play your game so you can learn as much from the audience that you're trying to reach. So obviously there's a lot of extra tips and things that include in this, but I wanted to keep it concise and think about some of the really large things that I would be doing differently if I could go back to little Anne and her game design journey. She just wanted to make things pretty and not have really any gameplay. These are the tips that I would give to her and these are the tips that I want to give to you so that you can have the most successful project that you can try to have. At the end of the day, sometimes you launch something and it doesn't work out, but you're going to learn a lot from that experience. So the more games you make, the more feedback you're going to get, the more you're going to learn from it. And just one little other side tip, play other people's games. Play lots of games. Learn about these games. Think about them as a game designer. <sighs> that was long-winded, but I'm very passionate about this and I wanted to share it with you guys today. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more, then subscribe and leave a comment once again if you have any tips or things that you've learned as a game designer or a game developer because I'd love to hear them. Thank you for watching and have a great day.